You're listening to Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong, all on Georgia Radio Network. Welcome to episode 146 of the Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong podcast. I'm Dave Roberts. With me, as always, is writer, journalist, Jessica Salagi. Why are you trying to erase history? You're trying to erase 20 episodes? Yeah, the first 20 without me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know what the number what was. What a liberal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, revisionist history? Mm-hmm. How was your week? It was... It was okay. How was yours? Oh, not bad. You know, as I mentioned the last show, when it dropped, uh, it was Connie's birthday. We went down to, well, to downtown, went to Buckhead for a couple nights and had a couple good dinners. Uh, the only bad thing is there's nothing to do. I mean, obviously there's something to do in a hotel room, but there's nothing <laughs> to do. Yeah. Uh, the orchestra is not in. The Fox has nothing going on. The ballet t- doesn't have anything going on. No, it's interesting times for sure. And and they say you can shop, but you've got to, you know, there's all these rules and crowd control and things of the sort. So, yeah, um, and we did to get out of the room enough time for the for the maid to do her thing. We went over to to Linux uh, to kind of look around, and look at some stuff, and it's just it's 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 sort of depressing. It's definitely depressing, and but. Along those same lines, I'll say this because, you know, my, I say mine was okay because news again this week was just, or last week at this point, it was just bleh. And when we talked midweek, you said, well, I've kind of been out of the loop. I mean, wasn't that nice? It was. Yeah. It is nice. It is sort of like when I was on vacation last month where we, you know, we sat and watched murder porn instead of actually like... We didn't turn on the news at all, other, other than the weather, to watch the storm coming in. We didn't watch <laughs> yeah, the news that you flew to. Yeah, we flew into, then drove directly into it. I, I, the only person I didn't see was Jim Cantore. You know, if, had I seen him, I'd be like, we got to get out of here. Yeah. But I mean, that had to be, I, I think we we're all, and I, that's one of the reasons we picked the so, show subjects that we did this week, because people are just... They don't want to not know what's going on because it's it is so much chaos and it and it's ever changing. But man, like people are over the election. Yeah, it's meant to be a day. Yeah. Well, and I don't really remember Bush v. Gore in the same context because I was younger. But was it the twenty four hour news cycle with that, or was it just like this is the update? This is what's going on. It's going to court. You know, it was a twenty-four hour news cycle because Fox News was on, was absolutely on the air, and so was CNN. The difference was it, it was one state, mm-hmm. and at the time I was big into talk radio and things like that. So there was a a lot of coverage, but it, it was isolated to one state, <clears throat> and it was easy to point at Florida. And go, ha ha, <laughs> uh, and that's where we get the the hanging chads and. and and all that stuff, and dimple chads, and, 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 and ballots being taken out of trunks of cars, and, and all that stuff. But yeah, but it, it was, it. I don't remember going this long. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it, it also wasn't like, I mean, of course, each respective side wanted to win Florida, but I don't recall it being just sheer hatred around the clock i mean social media has definitely exacerbated that but my god well with social media we're inundated with it every day so before everybody was on the the book of faces and and the tweets and all that stuff you went on with your life you turn the news on and watch watch whatever you're gonna watch and then you turn it off Mm -hmm. this is you know in the early days of even dvr so when it was time to watch, I don't know, what was uh, 2000, 2000 uh, Friends or whatever, I mean, you turned the news off and you went on to, to network TV. So, the, But even now, if you're, if you're sitting and watching TV, you, you've, you've got Facebook on your phone giving you alerts. You've got uh, alerts from, from different, there's no, there's, you have to 
forcibly forcibly unplug yourself now. Yeah, otherwise you can't escape it. Yeah, we're all part of the matrix. We're all plugged in constantly. And I I don't there weren't the ads that were running constantly. Mm-hmm. That that are still running about support the president. What well, well, how? What 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 do you <laughs> want me to do? Yes, please give me a specific task because I don't understand. Yeah, okay, s- support. I mean like 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 an athletic supporter? I mean what what do you want me to do for him? Right. I mean, it, this it's it's up to the lawyers now. It's, it's going to be up to the courts. Is it so. is it up to the lawyers? Because I am hearing. I mean, of course, we're hearing from a select few, a number of lawyers, and I don't want to get into this shit like doing what we said we weren't going to do. But is it to the point? Do you feel like it's to the point of courts? Because I I feel like we're still in the activism phase, and then we're stuck. There's a deadline coming up. It's it's going to have to get. I I think so. It's going to have to get to courts. I know. Supreme Court has already kicked a couple cases back down to lower court, saying you can't come directly to us. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let's not get into that. Let's do mention Big Daddy Unlimited, the sponsor for the show. They are your direct source of buying clubs of sorts for everything that goes bang and everything that makes going bang quiet. Uh, accessories, flashlights for, for firearms. Uh, you, draw, you buy firearms, shotguns, rifles, uh, have them shipped directly to your FFL. Go fill out a 4473, walk out with your item. If you're buying anything that's not a firearm, so even accessories or an upper for your AR or a new barrel for your rifle, uh, you can have that shipped directly to your house. If you buy a Class 3 item, an NFA item, such as a silencer or a short barrel rifle, you have that sent to a an FFL. You do your ATF paperwork. You wait a few months, and then you leave with your item. So big thanks to Big Daddy Unlimited. Blast from the past. Animals in cars, trains, but hold up, maybe not airplanes. Well, we talked an- about service animals at Yes, length. we did. Yes. Yeah, yeah, a while ago. Yeah, New rule cracks down on emotional support animals on airplanes. Yes, if you're an avid reader of All on Georgia, you knew that this rule was proposed and they were taking um, feedback from the public because they have to post it for 30 days. Um, but if I was interested in it mostly because we talked about it on the show and because the airlines asked the um, Federal Department of Transportation to draft a rule because they were tired of not having uniformity and, I guess, having to deal with angry customers um, who didn't, quote, understand the rules. So they asked the government to formulate a strict rule and definition. Service animal is defined as a dog, regardless of breed or type, that is individually trained to work or perform tasks for the benefit of a qualified individual with a disability, including physical, sensory, psychiatric, intellectual, or other mental disability. So if you have a dog because you have anxiety or because you're blind or because you, um, you know, Anything that falls into these, I, a dog, is it? Was was the was there actually an emotional support miniature horse on a plane? Yes, there was a miniature horse. There was a peacock. There was yeah. a chicken. Yeah. Uh, I think there was an emotional support hamster. I think there are some people who wanted to test the limits and see how far they could push the support thing. And, and there's lots of organizations that certify. I mean, an organization that certifies whether or not an animal provides that support, you just plead your case to them, and then they say, yeah, you do. That does that animal does do that for you. Here's your letter. And they would get, try to get on the airplane. So that's how all that this came about. Um. <clears throat> well, and you're in a confined space. Uh, usually you don't have a choice of where you sit. Sure, yeah. I wouldn't want to be next to a peacock. Not because I don't like peacocks, but because... You know, I I don't know what to expect with a peacock on a plane. Or a miniature horse. Well, I would like to see one in real life, but again, not on a plane. Which, you know, on an airplane, they're going to start dropping pieces of legislation right there on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cats, I mean, look, you can pay and, t- and take your pet. I Look, I'm a person that leaves my dog at the kennel when I travel. Mm-hmm. 
I don't take my dog everywhere. I know there are people who do take their dogs. I know, but I, I know you do when you when you take the dogs to grandma's house. Yeah, but I don't take them to the grocery or even to Lowe's where they're allowed. Yeah, uh, and I and I've got a neighbor who took his dog would take his dog to Home Depot and PetSmart to socialize them, mm-hmm. just get him used to being around other people. But I've also seen the I and mean, we all have the service animal thing abused. Uh, at the gun club, there's there's a lounge, and there's a, a member that would bring her dog in with a little vest on. And I'm talking about like, like a little, I don't know, a little tiny dog, and like set the dog on the table and stuff like that. And like, it that's not a service animal. And I, I think the I think the the key definition here is trained, individually mm-hmm. trained to perform a task. Right. So I've got a, I've got a customer who has a, a disabled child. And they had a very expensive service dog. Luckily, uh, part of that was covered by a charity. Uh, and the dog was there f- for the child. And very, otherwise, very sweet dog, very personal dog. But the dog was there for uh, uh, this kid who has, is very uh, far into the spectrum, a very low functioning spectrum. Uh, and, but and that dog was trained. These, these dogs are very expensive and very specialized. And then, you know, I, I go to a car wash one day and I'm sit, sitting around waiting for the, for, the, for the truck to get done. And I see a person with a vest on the dog with all sorts of patches all over it. Like got army rank on it. It's a service animal and all that stuff. And the dog's wagging his tail, licking people. Kid walks up. Can I, can I pet your dog? Absolutely. The dog's playing with the kid. I'm like, that's not a service animal. Yeah. A service animal's working just because you put a vest on your puppy. Well, doesn't, you're, doesn't, you're not supposed to pet service animals. Right. They're working. Right. It's a distraction. Right. They're, they're working. So I, I have a hard time believing that animal was individually trained. Now, obviously, this was not an airplane. Uh, you know, I understand not wanting to take your dog and put it, uh, put it in the cargo. Is things happen. They get oh the, yeah. The, the cargo area gets depressurized. Uh, sometimes the heat fail, fails in the cargo area. And nobody knows it. And an animal freezes to death because it's you know seventy to below below zero. Uh, so is it really I that cold? Not, oh, it's yeah. I mean, I knew it was cold, but I, that's crazy. Uh, so you that I understand the hesitance to doing that, and there are there are got to be better ways of, of handling that. And obviously, you know, you hate to put your dog in a crate and traumatize the animal that has to go through baggage claim and all that stuff and, and is scared and, and all that. So I understand, but there are services for that. There are places we like to call kennels and they take care of your dog. They'll even schedule playtime for your dog. Well, you know, you- animals aren't meant to go everywhere. I mean, even if I only had one dog, I know that it would be traumatic for my dog to get on an airplane with me. The, right. the entire thing from going through security to boarding a plane, to taking off, to landing, to going through another air or air, another airport and then going wherever it is that we're going that I needed to have one of them with me. I mean, that is a lot for a dog. I also don't think it's nice for the dog. Like, that they'd rather sleep here. I have someone come to my house when I go out of town for obvious reasons, but it's also less expensive and they can stay in their home. But they like to, sure, they don't want me to be gone, but they like to to sleep and be in their environment. Their dogs. I love them, yeah. but they're dogs. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's a pet. You know, uh, so. They're not world I, travelers. I think I mean, I, I've, and I've had dogs that travel real well, and I think it's cool. People have, uh, drive around with a dog in the truck and, and leave the air conditioner running for them as they go in the store and stuff like that. And I, I, I had a dog once that would ride around in my Jeep with me, and, and she was real well-behaved. And, you know, she'd sit in the Jeep, wait for me to go do what I'm going to do, and I'd come back. Well, here's I, the thing, though. I mean, the the reason that this was abused, not just with other animals, but with dogs, is because... I, of course, I'm happier and feel better when my dogs are around. Like I, I, they are, that's why I have them. So once you begin down that pathway, 
you know, arguably uh, someone with an emotional support or anything other than actually like a seeing eye dog, as they used to call them. That's really the only reason that a dog should be on a plane, in my opinion. Well, and I also think it's a little bit of cowardice to ask the government, tell us we can't do this. Well, also, what what happened to their union that's so powerful that lobbies for every, like, why couldn't their little group, all the things that they participated in, why couldn't they come up with a standard rule and then all of them adopt it? It, it wouldn't have to just fall on American Airlines or Southwest to make the first move. Right. Or, <clears throat> I don't care. Delta can say, look. Well, I don't care to, either, but if, yeah, if it was it, a deflection it, thing. Yeah, but the thing is, I... I Private entities asking a reg regulating body, please tell us we can't do this. Yeah, that's, that's stupid. That, that's, it's, it's intellectual cowardice. Just say, these are our rules. Because and, we are a business and we served other people other than just you. And when you book, when you book your travel, say, will you be traveling? Uh, do you have a service animal? Yes. Well, we only allow dogs and we only allow dogs that are specifically trained. Well, you don't, you don't like it? Go fly somebody else. Well, and I do believe the market would provide and that an entity would allow your peacock or your miniature horse if, if you pay more. Look, they, they fly turtles. You don't have a right to fly. Well, yeah, uh, but, but they fly uh, sea turtles. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I saw this when I was at the, at the turtle hospital in, in Marathon. They're, they're, they were going to ship one off to the UK for, for a zoo, because this one could not be released into, into the wild because, because of its injuries. Uh, or to an aquarium, whatever they're going to do. And they literally put it on a, put, put them on a flight. You can fly anything. Whale sharks were flown into Atlanta to go into the aquarium. Yeah. I mean, you can fly anything. It's, uh, it's the proper application of capital. But you don't get to fly with your emotional support parrot. But, but like I said, it, you can have your own rules. And I don't think telling people they can't take an untrained uh, online certificate for an emotional support animal and say that that applies to the ADA. No. This is, this is purely them trying to hide from, uh, from having to, to stand up to their customers. But I will say that this is yet another glaring example of the consequences of having an industry that has been bailed out by the federal government so many times, that does receive subsidies, that does receive tax breaks, and so much government intervention. And I'm not talking about from the FAA safety perspective. I'm talking about from actual operations and like market manipulation standpoint. This is a consequence when it's not so cut and dry of, well, it's a private entity, let them do what they want. Mm, like they've muddied those waters themselves. If it was, a, if, if you fly private and you charter a jet that you don't own, but you fly, fly private, you don't play these games. Right. Yeah, all things are possible with a proper, a proper application of capital. Well, yes, but also if, if, if it's not possible, they just say, we don't allow that. And you can, you can go through another company that does allow peacocks. Well, what's happening is they're sh they were showing up at the airport with the animal. You go, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, I, I, <laughs> I didn't know well, company, it didn't have my peacock. The company I paid $100 for, for my emotional support peacock, uh, said I could. Well, well, did you check with us? Right. So, yeah, I, I have no sympathy for someone who showed up with an emotional support ferret. Without doing their due diligence, because that's the other thing. People who have the animals and use them in every context of their day-to-day -day life, and it is truly intertwined in their life, they have done the research, they know what the rules are, and they've prepared. It's not a gotcha. And if you can't fly without your peacock, because it makes you too anxious... Stay home. Uh, go ahead and sterilize yourself. You need, to be, you need to go ahead and remove yourself from the human gene pool. Oh, Dave. You're just mad because you don't know where to get a peacock. 
There's a joke there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling it, though. <laughs> In this week's edition, of, we probably could have told you that was going to happen. 41 people test positive for COVID-19 following a swingers convention in Nolens. This is a story that we couldn't just ignore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> favorite line of the article, the opener. Bob Hannaford has regrets. I mean, I was on, I think, WSB, which I think it was an AP article, but it just killed me, like, of course, that's how you're going to open a swingers article. That's if the swingers are making the news, you know it can't be good. If the swingers are making the news, do you disagree? Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I don't disagree with you. <laughs> uh, only 250 people this year opposed to last year's 2,000 people to swingers convention. How many were couples? And how many were thruples? Huh. Anyway, that's a 2,000. I would not want to be in the housekeeping department at that hotel. No. <laughs> and this is the best. Uh, this to me is the best line. Uh, attendees were required to wear <laughs> masks in public spaces, including at parties and at the hotel's rooftop pool. But it's fair game in the rooms. I mean, what a I mean, waste of time. So seriously, what a waste. Ah. Uh, uh, they're required to wear masks. It does no I mean, good. I, it, who who cares if you're swapping it's awesome. other things? I mean, give me a break. I mean, we're required to wear masks. I I I I like that. That's a totally different convention. He also the organizer, your your friend Bob. He said like three times throughout the article, and I don't know if this was for media effect or what but three times he was quoted saying i wouldn't do it again i would not i would if, if i had to choose again i would not do it that would be like half the people who try swinging yeah that was a mistake i'd never do it again you gotta be i don't think this i don't think a swingers convention is for first timers though do you i would i would I would think you might try the especially trapeze club or something like that. Co especially during COVID, like yeah, that's um, yeah. That, I would say the convention is is rather advanced. Yeah, I mean, but it, like last year's, I mean, two thousand. I mean, at the trapeze club, you're only going to get I, I don't know. I mean, a hundred a uh, hundred different people to to choose from. So you're talking fifty couples. Uh, you got two thousand. So you got a thousand couples that that that, that you get to pick uh, pick from. So I guess the, the, the choices would be, be a lot better. But I would guess those 250 people, and I don't know how it's an, uh, an odd number. It's not. Um, 250 that's is not, not an odd, odd number. Yeah, 250 is not odd. It's 220, I know, it's 125 couples each. Uh, Are you that meme, Dave, that said God knows I would be too powerful if he made me good at math? <laughs> no, I'm actually pretty good at math. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I, man, I... That had to be 250 people that were just, screw it. I'm tired of COVID. I haven't, we haven't been able to, to, I've been having, I've been making love to my own wife for eight months. We've got to do something different. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a totally, I mean, I don't think anyone, where no matter where you stand on the COVID uh, debate or whatever you want to call it, um, I don't think there are very many people who will say, That you assume the same risk with strangers at Walmart as you do with strangers at a swingers convention. Like, it's just, it oh, just God. isn't happening. I, oh, God. A Walmart swingers convention? Well, because, oh, you know, the argument is like, well, you get, we get, we, we're, you know, you're touching the same things as people at Walmart. And if someone's not wearing a mask and this, that, and the other, like, it's a totally different, doesn't, no, it doesn't matter yeah. how long you're taking, like, even if it's, it's just a few minutes. Like, it's <clears throat> you're, not, you're not necking with anybody at Walmart. Uh, Walmart, hopefully not. Like, like Crocs and pajama pants just flying off and flying out. No, oh, God. <laughs> Why are you doing this? I I would think the the possibility for disease would be much higher than uh, uh, 
which is higher with, with other diseases within the when that within that community than with uh, uh with covid mm -hmm. i want to okay. find pa patient zero and see how many how many persons how many people that person directly affected well you know they probably do know because mr bob hannah ford who has regrets he said that they had a strict contract tracing policy and <laughs> this is my this is great during check-in, we issued diaries to everyone so it would be easier to track who they interacted with. We didn't just mean sex. We strongly urged everyone to keep a diary for everyone that they were in contact with for more than 10 minutes, especially without a mask. So, I mean, I don't know that they, I don't know if everybody did it, but they were asked to. And I don't know if this was like a policy or a rule, but they were all issued diaries to, you know, just even, I mean, what are you supposed to Dear do, right? penthouse forum. Right. I mean, are you supposed to, like, also, you know, just had a conversation, or are you supposed to be more in-depth if you spent other time, other things, whatever? I mean, how... Well, that becomes a grading scale for the men. Was, was it 10 minutes or not? It says, I mean, it didn't have to just be sex, Dave. I know. I, I heard that part. Mm -hmm. Well, my part's funnier. Okay. All right. Well... Why we have to limit these conversations. Plus, how do you pick out? How do you pick out a potential match if you can't see faces? Oh, I agree with that. That's dating in the COVID crisis is like she she's got three teeth in her head. I got mask fished. These are our opinions, and not necessarily those of all on Georgia, and certainly not those of any all on Georgia reporter not offering commentary on this very show. Probably not the opinions of most people. <laughs> Moving on. The pandemic fueled travesty of school closures. And we've discussed this uh, from an economic standpoint in many ways. It's more cost effective, but uh, it was in the context of college students. Yeah, so we talked about how, like, so much of what is taught when you when well i'll say this when you're teaching the way that a lot of public schools and public universities are forced to teach right now which is memorization and and concepts not actual critical thinking and you know life skills it is more efficient to teach that online right because like you don't have the building costs you don't have um the influx of people you, you don't have there's lots of things that you don't have to deal with but we are seeing the effects of that on public school aged children in particular right now and i think um it's going to some of it's going to be irreversible i don't yeah there's so much of the other school experience that that Kids are missing, especially little kids. Little kids need a teacher over their shoulder. Uh, little kids need, uh, especially when you start talking about fine motor skills, how to use scissors, how to write, uh, that kind of stuff is not, let's face it, not every home is great. 100%. Not every home is safe. Uh, and I'm not, this is not me stumping for public schools. I just said within the framework of what we have. Exactly. And within the framework of the Georgia Constitution, kids have a right to a quality education. So if you're in a home with, you know, six kids, a single mother, one computer, and she still has to work and make a living. How are these kids getting a quality education? How are they concentrating on what's going on in front of them? Well, you're really just jumping ahead on the outline. Um, oh, I didn't. I, I didn't read. That was just my. I, I didn't even read that off the outline. I was just. Well, that's just pretty talking. much that concludes the show this week. So <laughs> um, we'll just skip items one through four. But um, well, let's let's go. <laughs> Some headlines from the from the last month. Headaches, blurry vision. How online learning impacts our eyes. Disappointing grades. Technology, glitches, and glimpses of learning fun. Virtual education has a problem, a fatigue to engage. 
A failure. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't. See, that's why I don't read the outline. I can't read. Failure to engage. Both are correct, though. Yes, yes. Teaching the pandemic. This is not sustainable. Well, that is, pro- that is probably the headline of the year. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry. The swingers are the headline of the year. But in regards to education. Virginia school plan uh, plan uh, reopening as evidence of online learning gap piles up. Man, I can't, I can't talk this morning. It's, and this is, I mean, there's more that we're going to talk about specifically, but if you Google like learning amid pandemic or online learning 2020, it, and, and this isn't stuff that was just, you know, as a result of everyone getting sent home when there was a lot of chaos, this is, this is after plans have been put in place and people are kind of used to doing this. And most of the ones that every single one that I linked here is from is within the last week. And they're in Utah, Texas, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, South Carolina. I mean, of course, we're going to talk about Georgia and stuff, too. But it's in every state in rich schools in poor, or, you know, rich districts and poor districts. And there's different problems for each. but. Like, public school education was bad enough, and we are destroying it. Yeah, we yeah we are, and we have been for the last hundred years. It, it's 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 been a march towards mediocrity for quite a while, and now it's it's almost to the point of complete failure. Uh, high school student quote. My learning experience as a student this fall has been okay, I guess. The schedule of class has been okay, and the work is fine. Well, that's because I have no life. Unlike other people, I have no job or big responsibility in the house. Even if the school decides to change the schedule completely, it will stick. Uh, it still work for me because of how open my schedule is. So... I knew when we said high school student, people were going to be like, oh, wow, poor you. You don't have a job and you things like that. Um, and we we discredit kids and particularly high school students a lot. And we are just as guilty of it. But this quote in particular really resonated with me because I remember how busy I was in high school. Um, you know, I always had something after school, whether it was tennis or a group or a club or just doing something with my friends. Um, or even if my mom needed me to run errands or pick something up once I had my own car and things like that. Um, and that's not, especially the distance learners. I mean, they don't have that. A lot of them don't have activities. They don't have sports. They're not, they're just home and they're not interacting with anybody and their schedule really is open. And there is a lot to be said for the idle Anne's argument of, you know, what are they getting into because of the boredom? Yeah, and and that that is a that's a very good argument too. Is is kids with time on their hands will do will get into mischief. Uh, and you know, when you fill out your college application, a four is great, but it won't get you into a good college. Mm-hmm. You need a four You need good test grades and. When you're going looking at elite colleges, they they go, okay, now what? Well, I was president of the debate club. Okay, I I, I did this extra this activity, this activity, this activity. I worked here, here, and here. I interned at at this law firm, or I you know I did filing at this law firm. So I don't even know how these applications are going to look. Is it going to be disproportionately uh, dis dis uh, you know disadvantaged to? those places that are completely locked down like New York. Rona. No, you bring up a good point. And I mean, I think we're, we're going to, uh, there's already, there's so much that is disparity driven just by the mere existence. And, you know, it's not necessarily something that, society can even fix when you compare some metro areas to rural areas and some things just are because of differences in the world like it's just it just is but those differences that are manageable and mostly acceptable in regular life have have truly become 
unacceptable in terms of quality of life. And I'm not saying that like anyone has done anything to deliberately ruin the lives of children or but we are doing them a disservice by saying this is how it should be. Well, I would almost prefer to throw away a school year. Oh yeah. Look, if you're a, a rising senior this year and you're looking for a, a football scholarship and you're in one of these states where they just, they're not going to have, have games or those districts, they're just not going to have games or your season gets cut short to four games. Well, without a decent sample size, how are you going to get into one of these big schools? Mm-hmm. How are these, how are these recruiters that are out there going to find qualified, qualified players? Cause the, the difference between your junior and senior year can be stark. I mean, especially a, a kid growing that, you know, between 16, 17 and 18 can put on 50 pounds. Uh, well, and it's not terribly different from them suspending the ACT and the SAT last year. And I think this year, I mean, you're not even, you're truly making it like a one, what, like, what is everyone going to just get in? Right, you have to be able to separate the wheat from the chaff. That's just, that's just, you, you have to be able to figure out which students are going to be able to make it, whether it's athletically or whether it's academically. And with what's going on right now, I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do it when, at some point last year, a lot of these schools are just giving kids passing grades, which is a disservice to them also. Mm-hmm. If you need to repeat a class, you need to repeat a class. If you need to repeat a, repeat a grade, you need to repeat a grade, because you don't have the the basis of knowledge to move on to the next grade. And then Absolutely. you're struggle at that level and that, that cascades all the way up. Because if you if if a kid needed to repeat third grade because they weren't getting uh multiplication, you can't then take them by the time they get up to 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 algebra, if 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 they're so far behind they're still trying to catch catch up on the multiplication tables you know, it's just, it's, it's completely unfair to the kids. It doesn't mean they're dumb. It means there's something, especially when you're talking about kids at, at a, at a young age, that it's a, it could be a maturity thing. They weren't grasping the concept because like we were talking before, boys will stare out the window and rather be outside than listening to someone talk about math, which I can understand. If a child cannot read in the third grade, they are already on the pathway to prison. It's proven like there is a correlation that the the higher the number of or higher percentage of children in the third grade who cannot read as it continues to climb. So does and it's not just our laws like there is the fact that we have more and more laws all the time. We are setting these kids up to be failures. The only grade that you can just give a pass on is kindergarten because you do the same crap again in first grade. I mean. But you're talking about things that are not necessarily, I mean, we get in the discussion of fundamental for life, but things that are fundamental for the rest of your education. If you don't understand algebra one, you're not going to understand algebra two, or, or um, what is the one that there's like advanced algebra and things like that. AP. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, calculus. Con- yeah, it just continues to build and you're not making, I don't know. I, I just, what a disservice. Well, even with kindergarten, if you need to hold a kid back, because again, fine motor skills, they don't have the ability to work the scissors. The, they, they can't grasp the, the crayon the white right way. You, then you're going to put them in first grade and start gra- grading handwriting. So <clears throat> there's, there's, especially with, with uh, uh, lower the one through five. There's no shame in kids being held back. There's no reason they should be pushed through if they don't have, like I said, if you, if you can't read in third grade, yeah, there's a, it's a failure in life. It is. It's an app. It's a failure in life. And you're teaching them that lower standards are okay when times get tough, when in reality, it should be the opposite. But there was a quote in one of the articles that I read and they called it I mean, they were, it was part of the blame game because, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, but there's lots of, is it the parent's fault? Is it the teacher's fault? Who's, who's to blame for this? But 
they said, you know, one of the biggest failures of all of this was that there was a grace in grading. We just sent them home and said, you know what? Everybody passes. And it set this precedent that especially younger children were taught that you get paid for doing nothing today and they'll get paid. They will expect to get paid for doing nothing tomorrow. And, and now we're in tomorrow and they're not willing to apply themselves because last year it hit the fan and they said, you know what? Everybody gets an A. Right. <clears throat> and the, the, besides the, the, that part of it, the, the getting something for nothing is they're not, the way we communicate now is written. So much of it is on social media. And so much of the news that we consume is comes through the internet. Like people don't sit down at six o'clock and watch the news anymore unless they're eight. And the blame game going back and forth between the teachers and the students. <clears throat> I'm going to blame the teachers, but schools. Teachers and parents. I'm sorry, yeah, teachers and parents. Schools have been for decades been saying, "Give us your kids, give us your kids, give us your kids." I think we even covered a story that one of the one one of the reps wanted to extend the school day so that the kids could could have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at school for working parents. That they wanted kids to be in school for 10 or 12 hours a day. Hmm. You know, hand them to us, hand them to us, hand them to us, and then when things aren't going right, oh, it's your fault. Yeah, why did you do that? Now, I agree. A lot, a lot of it is parenting. And like I said, there are a lot of kids who don't have great home lives. And that's ref that is very reflective of kids who have behavioral problems and have learning disabilities that we find out that they're really not learning disabilities. They're, they're in a crappy home. Mm -hmm. They never had a mom or a dad sit them on their lap when they were little and read books to them. That they, 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 no one took an interest in them. Uh, as Robin Stern, we had, who had on the show with the be better, not bitter. Uh, no one ever told them you matter. So the kids, those kids tend to develop uh, learning problems and a disrespect for authority. And then the, those turn into disciplinary problems and they end up in a, in a special school somewhere because nobody sat them down and loved on them at home. And but, for a lot of kids, you know, I know school's the best part of their day because, you know, they're not at home with, you know, a, a, a bad situation. But there's the reverse of that too. And there's been plenty of headlines about it, you know, the parents intervening and the teacher being upset with the parent. But, and, and, you know, of course the ones that make headlines are the ones that are most, the most egregious. So I'm not, I don't want to speak on those because some of them are ridiculous, but there's a reason that they don't allow parents in the classroom unless there's like a fun activity. And, and it's not just, they want to control your kid. It's that it's distracting. And there are plenty of parents who will intervene or get in the way too much and, and not necessarily in a negative, like they're not trying to be, they don't think they're being a problem, but it's distracting for everybody because a lot of them require the kids to have their monitor on so that they can make sure that they're paying attention and they're watching and all this. And when, you know, mom or dad is over the shoulder trying to help give them answers when the teacher wouldn't normally, I mean, it just creates a host of problems. It's a terrible way to teach. I don't like it's, it. It is a very difficult way to teach, especially especially uh, school age kids. Now, as far as college goes, th there's a there's a lot of stuff that you really want in person instruction. Uh, got a friend who's studying to become an accountant. She's using her GI Bill. She said, you know, she took the online classes that she wanted to take online, but there's some stuff that you want to do in person. Uh, study groups. The, there's, a, there's a huge benefit, especially at the, at the college and, and, and beyond college level, of working together to, to understand concepts and discussing them in, in small work groups. To, uh, that's, that's the whole idea of doing group projects and all that. Is, besides learning teamwork, is be able to combine ideas discussing feedback right. not just having someone talk at you right and then come up with a group plan i mean if you just want someone to talk at you at some point we could just have teachers 
record all their lessons on videos one semester and then just in you just play them for the rest of the semesters. And look, there are those kids that can learn just by picking up a book and reading it. Just by by watching a video. And there are kids that need to learn by doing. That there's a reason that you're supposed to show your work. Is how did you come up? How did you come to that? Which I always hated when I was a kid. <laughs> yes. Because because I can do it in my head. Well, it was so stupid too. I mean, sometimes the show your work, like I just knew it. Yeah. But the, especially the, the, the history, uh, the English and things like that, you, you need, you need more than just a book and a really good history teacher brings history alive, explains what happened and why, or what happened. And then given the conditions, ask the kids, tell me why you think this happened. Explain to me what, what led to, uh, the World War One, besides the the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand, is what were the conditions that led to this? And having the kids understand what happened in history, you know, I'm a big history buff, so that's that's mm-hmm. where I come up with it. But under understanding the why is not just the dates to pass the test, and that's where good teachers come in, and that's where a lot of times group projects where you can get in small groups and discuss, well, what you know, what happened here, what why, and that. And we're losing that. And you don't get that on a Zoom call. Well, and it's also, there's something to be said for, because, you know, we talk about things that actually happen in life and things that don't and what's valuable. And there is value to somebody pitching an, a question to you and you having to articulate your thoughts on whether you read a story or on what you think it was like back then, or just explaining your answer for, for whatever the reason is to have to do that articulately um on a whim that 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 is valuable and you lose that well and i I think this this line is is good too which is we already cut out cursive now there are plenty of students who will not pick up a pen or a pencil at all it bothers me i i like to write things i of course i write online for a living but I write everything down. I like to, I learn, I remember it when I write it down. I liked, I like handwritten notes. I think all, like two people, I think it's all important. And clicking around on a computer all day is <laughs> not constructive. Well, it's not that it's not constructive, but you need to be able to take notes. And I'm, I, I have horrible handwriting. I always have. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even, even in, in my professional life, I need to be able to take notes and draw a basic diagram, uh, be able to walk a job site. I can't just pu- punch any, everything in, into my phone. Uh, I need to be able to, when I was in the army, you'd have a, you'd carry a notebook around with you and a pen everywhere you went. And if you went to a briefing, you would sit down, you would take notes and you go back to, go back to your troops and, and go through the notes of, of, of what was said and, and. You know, I, I understand this is now 25 years ago. Uh, I understand that, that I'm sure everything's on an overhead projector now, but w- when you're in the field, and, you're in, and I wasn't, a lot of your soldiers aren't highly educated. A lot of them are. they would be amazed how many master's degrees there, are, there, there is in the military. Uh, the, uh, the ability to, to take a knee, uh, even in the field, take notes from the commander, then go back to your troops and be able to relay those and they take their own notes of what their job is to do, be able to refer back to it, is it, important. Uh, you know, if you can't read cursive, you can't read the Constitution. I think that's how they want it. Yeah, I'm going to say you can get printed, uh, printed translations of it, but you can't, there's, there's so many things that you need to, be able to read in cursive that uh, historical documents, Letters between Adams and Jefferson, uh, the the beautiful language between used between the two of them, and be, be able to comprehend that. And again, this is someone with horrible penmanship. <clears throat> and of course, you know, we touched on that social interaction between friends. It's, it's, it's almost non-existent. A, a, a Zoom call, which I'm over Zoom calls. Like the the president of our uh, of our government affairs committee out here works for a large corporation. And they still aren't allowing in-person meetings. And I'm like, this is stupid. Like, 
five of us on the committee will get together at the chamber or whatever. But like, it's, I'm over the Zoom calls. You can uh, social distance if you need to. Right. You can wear a mask, you social distance, or you can not give people hugs and, and still shake hands and realize that, you know, this, we're just not going to stop living. But that's, you know, that's just me. And I will quote my partner here. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. <laughs> yes. I mean, kids are cheating. Shocking. Uh, oh, they're yeah. already talking about how math teachers in particular and, and or, you know, in where it's science and, and memorization stuff, they're going back to timed testing, which is something that we kind of moved away from in recent years, but they're going back to time testing so that kids have less time to look stuff up. Well, let me just tell you that in real life, I can look stuff up. Ah, you can, but <clears throat> you need to understand certain principles. Okay, uh, but what what does a time test do but create anxiety? It teaches you to deal with deadlines. Oh, come on. Look, I, I, the test from, for my contractor's license, for my uh, warm air license, was an eight-hour algebra test. It's open book, but you had so many books. There's no mm -hmm. way you could actually reference them in the same time. Sure. That's What's fair, that? though. You, you, have, you have references. You can look it up, but you have to know some fundament. You have to know a good bit of the fundamentals. That's reasonable. It is unreasonable to teach kids nowadays. Remember when they used to say, oh, you're not going to have a calculator everywhere you go. Mm, you're a liar. I also know people that have to pull a calculator out to figure out a tip. Sure. Like, how do you not know what 20% is? It's, 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 it's two 10%. Not that hard. But I, I, it's so much so that they've started printing at the bottom of receipts. You know, 16%, 18%, 20%. That they know that the average American can't, can't do enough math in their head to figure out 20% of a $100 bill. It's $100. What's 20% of that? Ask the waiter. It's 50 But uh, what's the quote here? I, I feel like with remote learning, I just don't have enough control over stopping cheating. Unfortunately, I have to be okay with knowing that students can cheat and I try to make things more doable. You know, cheating's always been a thing. Uh, plagiarism has always been a thing in school. Uh, I, I, I know people who, who would take, who would write answers on, on the, like the inside of their arm and roll their sleeve up and stuff like that. It's, it, that's always... With memorization tests, there will always be cheating. It's the critical thinking tests that, that are hard to cheat. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, other than, me a, why. Other, than a, other than a failure, what are they, how are they going to punish them? They're going to spend them? Right. You can't, you can't come back for a week. Okay. I'll just keep the computer off, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's... Yeah, there's no detention. Mm -mm. Stay after school. Sit in front of the sit in front of the computer for for an hour after after we're done here. <laughs> what a time to be alive! I do. I know we're running short on time, but I do want to talk about the physical impacts because you know how many for how long have we been hearing parents get criticized by other parents for putting their kid in front of the TV for too long? Or playing with the iPad for too long. Screen time, bad, bad, bad. And now we're like, hey, everybody, sit in front of the screen for eight hours. And as somebody who sits in front of the screen for 44 hours a day, I know how bad it is on your eyes. It's terrible. Your eyes, your back, your posture, everything. Everything. Now, look, if you've got an office set up, you can get yourself a, an ergonomic chair, or posture, and things like that. But when you're sitting at the kitchen table... And, and staring, and staring, yes, and, and and I know, and I know, kids are resilient and all that stuff. And, no, and look, and, so, and some of these classes are actually doing PE at home. It's requiring, and, and these are obviously better parents requiring them to go outside and do shuttle runs or you know, kick a ball and uh, uh, and do different stuff, and they and, and film it and, and submit it. They're obviously not failing kids so that they don't have someone to do that for them. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I mean, I hear you, but it's, it, like there's this condition about staring and that you don't blink and it, it conditions your body not to blink and like a catatonic state. It's, you're not talking back. You're just listening. Like you can ask some of these parents, they have to put their, the kids put their headphones on. And so it's just silence all day. Silence. Yeah. It, that's, that's not how kids are supposed to whisper and giggle and get out of hand and, and, be loud on the way to the lunchroom and you know in europe they never stopped sending kids to school during the wars right what's our excuse yeah absolutely and look these kids that aren't going to school to be around the same group of friends every day are still going with mom and dad to walmart home depot mm -hmm. Publix. they're still going out in public that's right and they're still interacting with people, still touching the same things. There's, they're still. I don't see how this is is reducing anybody's risk. And there's, there's, and kids are going to get together. I mean, it's it's just the way it is. If you you have a group of neighborhood kids. They're you. There's just so, only so. I don't know. I can't I can't talk today. I sound like an idiot. You just can't contain them for that long. You have to let them out. You can't just sentence a kid to sit, sit at home all day with mom, especially like a single child. You know, you're not going to have any friends. You're just going to sit here. Oh, you want to Skype call with your friend? That's not the same. Mm -mm. Also, what's the fun in throwing a ball against a wall and catching it? For more than 10 minutes, not much. Yeah, I mean, you can go up and down a slide by yourself so many times before it's not fun. So, I mean, yeah, this, this is going to... If it goes on much longer, this is going to result in soft minds and soft bodies. Which does not bode well for the future. Which I understand has been said by every generation prior. Mm, this is different. It is. It is. As we're running long, Jessica, do you want to get your closing thought? Well, it's kind of long, but I'll talk fast. So, David Perdue and Kelly Leffler are idiots once again. Um, they have introduced the Public Servant Protection Act. Um, and what it does is it says that any government employee, any appointee, and any elected official at any level of government would have a right to have their home address and phone number and the home address and, and phone number of any immediate family members removed from publicly displayed websites to include like the white pages, um, any website that hosts Spokio, all those things. Um, the tax assessor, you have, a, they would make it a, it would be a right. And then it would be a crime for somebody else to post the home address of those people. So not only are they attacking, like creating a special class of people that they're making up a right, creating a special class of people, um, giving only that special class of people that right. And they happen to work with the government and be government agents and elected officials, which are all things that are a choice, but they also are regulating private entities, private websites and making more crimes for things that are currently protected under the First Amendment. So, um, idiots. It's like they, every single day, they wake up and try to find a reason to alienate more voters. And honestly, I think they would be better off if they would just stay in their basements without the internet and ride it out until January 5th, because this is a terrible idea. It worked for Biden. Yep. They, 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 they don't, they, who's advising these people? Yeah, I don't know. Who are we pandering to today? Police, which I understand. I mean, but they already already have protections for them. They have them create LLCs that are not attached to their name. And they, they already hide their addresses. There, there's already mechanisms for every problem. It's already illegal to harass people and stalk them and threaten violence against them. We don't need another law, especially at the federal level. And you don't need to make it a crime. Because what if I want to post an address and be like, does anybody know if this is so-and-so's real address? Because I don't think they live in the district. Ah, that, that's, that's a very good point. Well, of course it is. That's, I thought it through. That's, that's, that's the best, your best point of the day. <laughs> They're all great points. <laughs> your turn. What's up? Today, as the show drops, it is Pearl Harbor Day. Mm -hmm. So the date that shall live in infamy. So just remember that. Think, think about uh, 
the folks that that uh, perished that day in an unprovoked attack, and what drug us into World War II. So, for Jessica Salaji, for Eric Cumbie, our editor, I'm Dave Roberts. Have a great week.